Hey everyone, welcome to Inktober drawing number 12. This drawing, I sort of looked at what I did yesterday and said, I wonder what the exact opposite of this is. Um, well, not exactly. I was kind of like, okay, I did this sort of more muscular female character in a very dynamic pose. And I was like, I, I think I'm going to do a kind of more slender, um, excuse me while I knock my pens around. A um, more slender male character in a more um, conservative pose. And that's what I started with. I had no idea what the background behind him was going to be. And as I was going, I was thinking of doing another, like, urban -y landscape. Because I kind of want to practice those a lot. I I think I do need a lot of practice getting those out and, and just getting them um, looking right. Like, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be like amazing, mind-blowing landscapes. The, to me, I just want to get them looking like right, like looking like that's what they are. Like you understand that's an urban, urban landscape, and they look fine. Um. So that that was my that's my biggest thing with a lot of these, and why I tend to go urban with the backgrounds is I want I want to try to get that type of background. Um, really, really down. It's something that I've always had trouble with, and I think I'm always going to have trouble with. I've been doing I've been doing artwork um, for like ten years, and technically ten years plus if you also do count the in college years, and I guess end of high school, whatever. Um, and the biggest one of the biggest things is perspective for me. I can never really do it well. I always have to think about doing it. Um, it never comes naturally to me. I've never been able to do it sort of in a speed painty style. Like it always looks wrong. It always looks like I've messed up. And I think a lot of it is just because I stop thinking sometimes while doing it. Um, or I try to do it without thinking, like try to be like, okay, this is going to be me doing this naturally. And it never comes out good. So part of the reason I, I do a lot of urban landscapes with these is I want to practice it and really try to get that get that down because i think that's kind of artistically where i need to go next to maybe push myself forward is just get these like more detailed correct looking and interesting um artificial backgrounds because natural backgrounds are easy doing a, a forest in the background forest stream happy little trees everywhere that's kind of easy especially in things like photoshop where you can practically make a brush that does that for you like i have like like two dozen cloud brushes that are basically various types of clouds turned into brushes that you can just plop clouds of any shape size and variety into an image so and it's like yeah you got to know how to use those sparingly and not make it look really bad because you can make it look really bad and hokey but yeah um you can do that you can make a brush that can really really look like trees or you can just use a standard round brush with a slight bit of transparency and work with that. And that kind of looks like markers almost. And you can you can do a natural background like that. But very, very urban backgrounds. Um, you can't really fake. At least I can't really fake. I haven't really found a way to fake them. So to me, there's something like I have to learn how to draw them. And well, I mean, I yeah, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a denim to that. There are ways you can fake it. There are ways you can just take like chunks of buildings, plop them down in Photoshop, and adjust various um, filters and um, adjustment layers. And you can do some cutting on them and painting on them and texturing on them. You, you can assemble. You can assemble urban landscapes with. Um, pre-existing images. I mean, if you look at Revenge of the Sith, Star Wars Episode 3, um, that was a big thing in my when I was in college to look at for visuals. Movies kind of sucky. I mean, it's really, really sucky, but the visuals are great when you're an artist and you're trying to pick up on how people make art for those, for things like that. And it's like, oh, yeah, I can look at like, you can look at um, the landscapes for Coruscant and pick up how they did that. 
And, I mean, there are a ton of art books released for that movie as well. So, it's not like they're hiding any secrets in it. So, you can look at that and, and pick up a, a lot of ways to cheat urban backgrounds. But, additionally, a lot of backgrounds that were done for that by the concept artists, and this is just one example of this, were done completely out of their imaginations. Start to finish, completely imagined pieces of art. And I'm sort of working on the image still, so that still right now. You'll see the full full scanned thing when it's done. I just saw some things I wanted to tweak. So you hear me scraping my pen around in the background a bit. Um But yeah, you you end up with way you like the the thing about landscapes is a lot of them, especially in that more concept art style, are just ground up. From imagination drawings so that's kind of what I I want to learn to do better and hopefully um, evolve on that and that's why a lot of these backgrounds always end up looking urban um, just cityscapes in the backgrounds of all these things varying types of cityscapes because if we go all the way back to number five um, it's that like hyper futuristic gothic and in number six kind of had some planar things with there is that weird bridge. And then we had some sort of like futuristic kind of planish buildings. And then we had the underground stuff as you go through. And then we had like the, the buildings with the trees on them. And the one yesterday kind of had hints at buildings outside this tunnel. Um, so yeah, I do a lot of urban urbanized things just because that's what, what I want to practice mostly. But in this one, I, I thought I'd be doing that and I ended up not. Instead, we get like this giant robot spider that I just I just put together with random shapes. I think it only looks okay, honestly, mostly because it's not as symmetrical as I would like. And um, yeah, the face mask thing is purposely asymmetrical, and I probably should have made the body asymmetrical and maybe actually put some some design work into the body a bit more. But I was throwing down shapes and just went and just ran with it. Sometimes that works really well. Sometimes it, it gets a little wonky. But, um... Yeah, the figure, like I said, I wanted it male in the conservative pose. That was kind of thin. Little fey compared to uh, yesterday's image. And obviously, he's probably the first male character I've drawn to that has really short hair. <laughs> I think every male character has had long hair. Or no, we had the bald guy. But that's a com complete opposite of long hair. So of all the male, male characters I've had that have had hair, this guy's the first one with short hair too. Um, so yeah, I did spend a little time getting the spider down, but uh, spider robot thing, I don't even know what it is. I probably should have cocked its head to the side a little bit too, just so it's not looking straight at the viewer. But yeah, anyways, um, I think we're going to call the video for today. Please check out my Patreon. Uh, you'll find a link in the description below. And there should be a, a URL on your screen. And of course, um, my not or my gaming channel. Um, always available. Always up. New videos coming up. The 12th. So we're two days out from Endless Legend getting its, ex its uh, DLC. And I probably should have the Calidor's Regalia video up, which is a really sweet armor set in Grim Dawn. And I think Endless Space 2 is probably going to have its third video up soon as well. And then I'll go on to do more Endless Space 2 stuff as that game develops as well. So, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys tomorrow for more Inktober drawings.